Hello, it's Ahmed Fathi and welcome to the first video in our Computer Graphics Fundamentals using WebGL course. This course will be concerned with low-level computer graphics and low-level WebGL. We will have two wings in this course. The first wing will be the mathematical wing where I'll be illustrating the low-level mathematics necessary for computer graphics understanding. This will be basically linear algebra. The second wing will be low-level programming of the graphics card in order to be able to draw on the screen. The scene you are viewing right now is actually made using WebGL and it is running on the browser. It is made using a high-level library, a high-level game engine built upon WebGL called Babylon JS. You can view this scene in your browser if you go to the Babylon JS website. Another example here is called After the Flood and it is made by Play Canvas. This is also a sort of game where you can move inside the browser and it is made using WebGL. We can also move like this and see the great computer graphics that we see here, see the water for example, see the trees and so on. Now, what is WebGL? WebGL is some kind of extension or some kind of variant of OpenGL. What is OpenGL? OpenGL is an open graphics library. You can think of OpenGL as an interface using which you can access and use the GPU. Now, what is the GPU? The GPU is the graphics card. The graphics card is the main component in your computer that is responsible for graphics calculation. Now, how does it do this? Actually, the graphics card is a combination of a very large number of small processors. Let's compare between the CPU and the GPU. The CPU is made of one or a small number of powerful processors that can handle very complex operations. On the other hand, the GPU or the graphics card is composed of a very large number of small, simpler processors. But these small processors can work in parallel, so they can help each other in doing very complex tasks under one condition. These tasks must be able to be parallelized. They must be able to be performed in parallel. You will see that computer graphics calculations are very highly parallelized and so the GPU is the perfect fit for doing these operations. We will come to this point later. Now let's get back to OpenGL. I have said that OpenGL is some kind of an interface to access the GPU. It is some kind of a standard rather than an actual code implementation. Now why is it like that? The reason why is that graphics are actually handled by the GPUs and there are many vendors, many companies that create GPUs for us. Each company of those can have its own features and its own implementation in its actual hardware. So actually those hardwares, those actual hardwares can be different. But we as programmers wish to write code that can work on any GPU. So that's why we standardized the interface and left the implementation details to be handled by those companies. Actually, when you are updating your graphics card driver, you are somehow updating this implementation of the graphics function of the GPU. So we now have something like this. We are here as programmers. And this is the OpenGL interface. And those are different GPUs like NVIDIA and AMD and so on. So we as programmers only deal with this OpenGL and then each company has its own implementation of the functions that the OpenGL standards obligate them to have. To be more accurate, WebGL is actually based upon one specific version of OpenGL called OpenGL ES. OpenGL ES stands for OpenGL Embedded Systems. This is some version of OpenGL that is optimized for devices with low processing powers. Now let's see an example of some operations that can be parallelized. Let's talk about matrix vector multiplication. Suppose you have a matrix like this, A, B, C, 
D E F G H I and you multiply it by a vector X Y Z. Now, what is the result of this multiplication? We have three numbers. The first number here will be the result of multiplying this row by this column. What about the second number here? The second number here will be the result of multiplying this row with this column. Now, does this number here depend in any way on the result of this number here? The answer is not. The same happens for the third number here, which is the result of multiplying this row by this column. So we can see that matrix vector multiplication can be highly parallelized on its own. Let's take another example. Suppose you want to multiply this matrix by this vector, but you also want to multiply this same matrix by another vector, let's call it KQR. This will give us another result vector here. Does the result of multiplying this matrix by this vector depend in any way on the result of multiplying this matrix by this vector? The answer is also no. As we will see later, the graphics computations have a very large number of matrix vector multiplications. You might have hundreds of thousands of matrix vector multiplications per second. But all of them are parallelized, and so they are very good fit for using the GPU. What programming language should we use when we type OpenGL code? The answer is OpenGL actually does not care so much about the language. There are many versions of OpenGL in different languages. You can write in C, you can write in Python, you can write in JavaScript, and so on. Since we will be developing graphics code on the web, the natural choice seems to be JavaScript. And that's why WebGL was designed to work using JavaScript. Actually, there are two versions of WebGL now. There is WebGL and there is WebGL2. There is WebGL1 and there is WebGL2. In this course, we will be using this WebGL2. But note that you have to make sure that your browser supports WebGL2. Not all browsers support WebGL2 for now. You can download the latest version of Chrome, for example, or Firefox, and they will support WebGL2. The final note I'd like to say is that I do not expect you to have previous knowledge of computer graphics or of web development. We will cover all that is necessary for both those topics. The only thing I require you to have is basic knowledge of some mathematics like matrices, vectors, dot products, and cross products, and so on. I also require you to have some experience with some programming language. It does not need to be JavaScript, but at least you must know what are variables, what are functions, what are loops, what are arrays, and so on. If you know this, you will be good to go. So make sure that your browser supports WebGL2 and that WebGL2 is also enabled in your browser and meet me in the next video.